What's going on, smart people? Short video today, as if my other videos aren't always short, but I need to make this one a short one because I'd like to get started on my homework as soon as possible. And that brings us to the point of this video, my first homework assignments of grad school. I'm making this video a bit prematurely in that I haven't gotten my math methods homework yet, but that's just going to be vector calculus. That's what we're doing right now, and I didn't want to delay the video until Monday just for that. It's not really that physicky. Physics-y, uh, but I did get my classical mechanics homework and my quantum mechanics homework, and I can't exactly share with you what it's on, but I can go over what it's on. What I mean by that is I'm not going to go over the specific problems themselves, but I can go over the material that the problems cover. And this is for two reasons. One, university policy. If a professor comes up with a specific problem, I don't want to share it and then them not be able to use that problem ever again. But some of them are book problems, which I am able to share, but I'm not going to, at least not now, because people will be tempted to help me. And I read the comments and I don't want, I don't want spoilers for my homework. But I think you get the idea, so let's move on to the actual homework, the first of which is my classical mechanics homework. It's five questions three of which are from the Goldstein Classical Mechanics book, Chapter 1, so if you really want an idea of what my homework's on, I mean, I'm sure there's PDFs available online with that book, go to Chapter 1, that's roughly what I'm doing. Uh, as for the ones that aren't from the books, they're mostly, the first one is relating angular momentum and rotation about a fixed axis to the work done if maybe a bar connecting them may or may not be retractable. And then the next one is your generic pendulum mass problem right down Lagrangian, that kind of thing. I'm sorry, I know I'm being a little bit vague, but I kind of have to. As for quantum mechanics, we haven't actually gotten to any quantum yet because we're building the theory from the ground up. We're starting with basically F equals MA, going to Euler-Lagrange equations, Hamiltonians, Noether's theorem talking about how symmetry implies some things being conserved. So needless to say, this whole homework for quantum is also just classical mechanics. It's structured a bit differently from my classical mechanics homework in that for two out of three of the problems the professor gives us some Lagrangian and then says determine the Euler-Lagrange equations, uh, come up with the generalized momentum and the Hamiltonian, so do the whole like Legendre transform um, that for converting from Lagrangian into Hamiltonian and then uh, parameterizing it a little bit differently. The other one says to basically just write down the Hamiltonian and then talk about what quantities are conserved, which again is pointing at Noether's theorem. The third question is really just getting dust off of the gears and, and making sure that we're still comfortable using different coordinate systems. So it's basically doing this stuff, but forcing us to do it in Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical coordinates. The whole point of these homework assignments is, is to demonstrate how if you have some kind of system that's subject to constraints, using Lagrangian or Hamiltonian mechanics is where it shines the best. You can solve these kinds of problems using Newton's laws, but they tend to be a bit more convoluted in that you have to account for all of the forces in the system, including the forces of those constraints. So things like maybe a normal force or some kind of barrier, like a bead on a wire or something like that. Now, as far as quantum mechanics goes, yeah, we're not really going to be using Lagrangians too much, but being able to see how the Hamiltonian is connected to the Lagrangian, and if you've had any quantum mechanics, you know, the Schrodinger equation is written in terms of the Hamiltonian operator. So seeing where that comes from and, and being reminded of how it gets applied classically, it really helps motivate why it's so useful in quantum mechanics. So I, I really like that our professor is taking the time to emphasize the foundations of physics, to go back to classical mechanics and make sure everyone's on the same page. Not to mention, it's not like once you take quantum mechanics you're done with Lagrangians, that they definitely come back full force if you learn any quantum field theory. But that's about it. Today is August 23rd. These homework assignments are due on the 30th and the 31st, which means I have about a week to finish both of them, which shouldn't be too bad. About eight problems. I can do that. It's like a problem a day, right? So I'm going to get started on that. I'm excited. This should be fun. Let me know in the comments section what you enjoy the most about classical mechanics or what you're looking forward to the most in classical mechanics, and I'll see you guys there.